Hi all, uh, welcome to week four. Uh, so we're starting this week by looking at something called confidence intervals. Uh, so confidence intervals basically is we start off with a binomial distribution. So we talked about this last week. So binomial distribution. Remember here what we had is we ran something n different times. So we had n trials. Um, each with success, uh, success uh, p. Uh, with chance of success p. And remember how the what we kind of did for this is we drew the Pascal's triangle. So we had 1, 1, 1, uh, 1, 2, 1. Um, and we labeled these with p and 1 minus p to kind of figure out what are the chances of something occurring, right? Uh, and we found out that the probability of something happening k times out of n, so the probability of k in this case was n choose k times p to the k and then 1 minus n minus 1 minus p to the n minus k. So this was the distribution that we talked about. So this is the binomial distribution. So remember distributions are the functions. Um, and then remember what we did is we took this and we did like a little histogram of it. So we said, okay, well, here's kind of the chances of things happening. Um, and we said, well, if you look at this closely, this actually looks like a little curve. Uh, and this curve is going to be approximated through what's called the normal curve. Um, and so what we're going to do is look at this and say, well, what happens if um, the probability changes? Like, this probability, this um, approximation works well sometimes, but it doesn't work well all of the time. So let's run through like um, a little example and of uh, kind of what, I, what I'm talking about. Uh, like how do we, like basically the question becomes like, um, say I'm running some trial, right? So I start making a histogram. So I start making my little histogram, right? Uh, this little black part underneath. And I want to know, okay, well, how close does this um, curve, um, how close is this histogram going to be to our actual probability? So like, how close is this to reality? Uh, so like for an example, if I roll a die three times, so I'm going to roll a die three times and I get a six once. How do I know that six doesn't appear one third of the time, right? So one out of six times I roll, one out of three times I roll the six. So I have one third as my um, relative uh, probability. Um, like, so what are the chances that this is actually accurate, that one third is correct? Um, at first you might be like, oh, well, obviously like it's a die, it's gonna be one six, so this is wrong. But what if I told you that this die is not fair? It's not a fair die. Well, now you can't necessarily be like, oh, this is not fair, like um, you don't know, right? Um, and so this is where we can take advantage of basically the law of large numbers because as we do more and more trials, we're going to get um, more and more data. And as time progresses, we should get closer and closer to reality. Um, so for example, uh, now if I were to do the same thing, but I said instead of doing it three times, I did this trial three trillion times. So say I do it three trillion times, I roll a die three trillion and one trillion of the time, the number six showed up. Now you're going to be a little more likely to say, yeah, then probably it's a one third chance. I'm going to get a six. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, this relative frequency. So we normally let P hat in this class denote le uh, relative frequency. Um, and as N increases, we're thinking that the relative frequency is going to be going towards the actual frequency. So this is the relative re frequency, rel frequency, frequency and this is actual frequency what we should see happen um, we can so we can actually use the normal approximation um, in order to figure out how close our relative frequency how close our trials are to reality um, and so notice how the high the as we made our z higher so when we looked at these kind of intervals here I guess I should use yellow as we looked at these kind of intervals here as Z went higher, we encompassed more and more of our normal curve, right? So our normal curve, we got more and more of the things. Um, so for example, when we had uh, Z is equal to four, 
we had 5 minus 4. 4 was roughly equal to 0 0.9999, 4 nines, right? That means if n is large enough, um, we can be over 99.99% sure um, that our probability is accurate within this interval, right? Um, so what do I mean by within this interval? Um, basically what I mean is, well, let's look at the number of successes. It's basically saying that the number of successes, which is n times p hat, um, is going to be very close um, to np. And in particular, what we're saying is this is going to be close by this little factor. Um, right? It's going to be plus or minus 4 off on either side. Uh, and basically what this means is that the relative frequency p hat will differ by, so here just divide by n, both sides. So what we do is we take, um, right, so we're look, we had np, um, np hat minus np is roughly equal to 4 square root of np1 minus p. So if I divide both sides by n, what I get is the difference between p hat and p um, is equal to 4 square root of p 1 minus p over square root of n. Uh, so here what I did, uh, in case you're a little confused, this is just n over n squared, right? So it's 1 over square root of n. Um, so it's going to differ by 4 square root of p 1 minus p divided by n. So all of this is under the square root brackets. Um, and so what we have is if you kind of recall from last time, we kind of started talking about some of these things when we were talking about the law of large numbers. So what we kind of showed is that since p is at mo like it's got to be at most one half, then we know that this little part here, this little um, square root part, this little part here, this is always going to be less than or equal to one half square root of n. So what we have is this is always less than or equal to four times one half square root of n, right? So this we saw kind of last time. Um, so these, uh, this four and this two cancel and we get two here. Um, and that means that in other words, our P is somewhere go is going to be in the interval P hat plus or minus two square root of n. So notice how as our n increases, um, then our confidence in this is going to be better. Our interval is going to get smaller, right? As n is getting bigger, this little thing here is getting smaller. Uh, and we're going to be more and more confident of that our, our thing is within a tighter range. So we're going to get closer and closer to our actual frequency. Now this interval, since we had chosen, remember here we chose minus 4, 4, right? We chose z equal to 4. Now because of this, we have a 99.9% .9 accuracy on this. And so this is going to be called the 99.99% confidence interval uh, for P. 99.99% confidence interval for P. So this confidence level is specific to the binomial distribution. Um, we can't do it for other distributions, not necessarily for now. We will look at things potentially later on, but for now, um, this is all we have. Um, so that's it. So if I change my Z, if my Z changes to something else, um, then that's then my uh, percentage is going to change and I'm going to have a slightly different thing. Um, so I'm going to stop here uh, for now and we'll look at an example in the next video. Thank you.